Uh, okay, Yuri, hand me the sugar. What's the magic word? Um, please? What? Where's the rest? Uh, that's all we have. Hello, what are you baking, Yuri and Ruthenium? Oh, hi, Xenon. Our parents are out for the night, and they left us some money for dinner, so we decided to buy cookie ingredients. I was trying to bake cookies, but my stupid brother here didn't pick up sugar at the store. Ruth, that's not nice. You don't have to call Yuri names. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Mm, okay, fine. My less than optimal intelligence brother here can't follow a simple shopping list. Ruth, it's not that big a deal. Just cut the recipe proportionally and make a smaller batch of cookies. Say what? You just need to use a little stoichiometric math to assure you cut your other ingredients by the same ratio, and then your cookies will be fine. Let me see your recipe. Ah, shortbread cookies. Well, it looks like you have excess amount of butter and flour, which means your limiting reactant is sugar. The recipe calls for two sticks of butter, or 227 grams, 250 grams of flour, and 184 grams of glucose sugar. It looks like Yuri only has, hmm, I'll guess roughly 90 grams of sugar, or about half of what you need. So, if we just cut the other ingredients in half... Bingo, Yuri! Smart move! Um, I think we've already determined he's not smart. Or... we could just make more sugar! <sighs> now you're really sounding L-T-O-I. What's, What's that? that? <sighs> Less than optimally intelligent. Duh! Now I'm starting to think you're both LTOI. <sighs> Ruth. Actually, Yori, that's a brilliant idea. Let's see if the recipe book includes the chemical formula for sugar. Okay, here we are. It looks like all we need are six moles of carbon dioxide or CO2. Moles? Ooh, like those things growing on great grandma's face? No, no. In chemical formulas, moles are atomic portions equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power particles of a substance. Okay, let's pause here for the sake of beginners who don't have a clear understanding of molar mass. In one of our early episodes of Xenon and Friends, we explored atomic mass in terms of atomic mass units, or AMUs. For example, oxygen's mass comes from eight protons plus eight neutrons, each of which contributes one AMU for a total mass of 16 AMUs in each oxygen atom. Although the periodic table tells us the mass of one particle of each element in atomic mass units, what about molecules? Let's start with one of the world's simplest molecules, H2O or water. The subscript 2 after the H in hydrogen means the water molecule has two hydrogen atoms for every one O or oxygen atom. Since there's no subscript after the O, we presume there's only one oxygen atom per molecule. Next, let's add a coefficient, in this case, 3. A coefficient, written larger than a subscript to the left of the molecule, multiplies everything in the compound. In this case, we're tripling all atoms, bringing the total number of hydrogen atoms to 6 and oxygen atoms to 3. But we can scale this up when we multiply our three molecules by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power, a number too large to count in one lifetime.
Molar mass is the mass of one mole, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power particles in grams. Although the number of particles per mole never varies, one mole will always be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power particles. The mass of a mole will vary based on the size or mass of each particle. The term mole will always refer to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power particles, whether those particles are atoms, molecules, or something else. Let's return to our water example. Hydrogen has an average mass of 1.008 grams per mole, meaning 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power atoms of hydrogen has a mass of 1.008 Gram. The molar mass of oxygen, meanwhile, is 15.999 grams. Since we have two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen in each mole of H2O, let's multiply and add. 2 times 1.008 grams of hydrogen plus 15.999 grams of oxygen equals 18.015 grams per mole of water. But again, let's say we have three moles of water. 18.015 grams times three equals 54.045 grams. In other words, three times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power molecules of water has a mass of 54.045 grams. Let's try another common example, but this time we'll have just half a mole. Sodium chloride, NaCl, has a molar mass of 22.99 grams of sodium plus 35.45 grams of chlorine, or 58.44 grams. When we multiply by 0 0.5, we see that half a mole of NaCl equals 29.22 grams. Last, what if we're given a certain number of grams of NaCl and need to figure out how many moles that is? Let's set up the equation as shown below in such a manner that we can cross cancel the given number of grams of NaCl with the known mass of one mole of NaCl. After cross canceling, our only unit left will be moles of NaCl. So we'll multiply across, then divide we wind up with 204.54 moles of NaCl divided by 58.44. And voila, we can conclude that 204.54 grams of NaCl is equivalent to 3.515 moles of NaCl. Simple. Now let's return to ruthenium, uranium, and xenon's kitchen application of stoichiometric math. Anyhow, we'll mix a ratio of six moles or portions of carbon dioxide with six moles of water, and that will yield one mole of sugar with some oxygen left over. Yeah, we don't need any oxygen in these cookies. Well, they do need to bake in the presence of oxygen. Mom usually keeps some carbon dioxide in here somewhere. It doesn't look like we have any left. Oh, sure we do. Carbon dioxide is an invisible gas. Okay, this jar contains 176 grams of CO2. So, 176 grams of CO2 times one mole of CO2 per 44 grams of CO2 equals four moles of CO2. Alrighty, as long as your parents have paid the water bill, we'll have plenty of water, our excess reactant, but only four moles of our limiting reactant to CO2, because we need a ratio of six moles of CO2 for every one mole of glucose sugar. So this means we can only create four six of a mole of sugar. Glucose is about 180 grams per mole. Stoichiometrically, that means 
4 moles of CO2 times 1 mole of C6H12O6 per 6 moles of CO2 times 180 grams of C6H12O6 per 1 mole of C6H12O6. Of course, we cross-cancel our units diagonally, and then we multiply across 4 times 180 equals 720, and we divide that by 6, so that equals 120 grams of C6H12O6 glucose sugar. Presuming Yuri has about 90 grams of sugar on his spoon there. 90 plus 120 equals 210 grams of glucose sugar. But your recipe only calls for 184 grams of sugar, so... Oh, that's more than enough to make a full batch of cookies. I was just going to say that. No, you weren't, because you're a little LTOI. Yuri... Two wrongs don't make a right. Anyhow, Ruth, that's stoichiometry. It's the math that explains ratios and chemical formulas. And cookie recipes. Wait, Xenon. How do you know how many moles and grams and all that? Well, I have molar masses from the periodic table more or less memorized, but that's a topic for a future video. Video? What do you mean? Oh, you two didn't know? Your parents have a nanny cam in that teddy bear over there. What? My parents record my every move when they're out? Oh, no. Yeah, Ruth. They know when you've been naughty and say mean things to your brother. And Yori, they know when you've been nice. For more free and fun ways to learn chemistry, subscribe to Xenon and Friends on YouTube or visit xenonandfriends.com.